Hey guys, welcome back. Happy New Year. Oh my God, so much has happened. Wow, 2020. I'm trying to forget it. <laughs> I'm trying to block it out of my system. If you're new to this channel, my name is Diane and I am a digital tie-dye pattern designer. Um, I also make tie-dye Photoshop brushes and also recently started making them into Procreate tie-dye brushes as well. So if you're interested, I'll drop in the link below this video and you can check it out on your own. A lot of people have been asking me, how do you create some of those tie-dye Photoshop brushes? Um, it's no big secret. I actually paint them in Photoshop. So I digitally paint them with a Wacom tablet and I have a full course on how to do that step-by-step -step on Skillshare. I'll drop the link down below this video and you can check it out um, and take it if you wanna learn how to do that. And in this video, hey, we ain't going nowhere for a while. So you might as well get some learning done while you're at it, while you're stuck at home. So I've seen so many tie-dye t-shirts, hoodies, and sweaters that have kind of like exploded online. Why, why is tie-dye so popular right now? Because we're at home and they're like the cutest, comfiest things to wear while we're lounging at home or working from home. So um, in this video, I want to show you how to create tie-dye Photoshop brushes so that you can uh, create your own inspired and fun projects, whether you're making digital wallpapers or backgrounds or even making tie-dye t-shirts and hoodies. I'll show you how to get there step-by-step. Step. All right, let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so once you've gotten Photoshop open and powered up and ready to go, uh, the first thing that you're actually gonna do is we're gonna create a new document. So I have one already made here, but I kinda wanna walk you through it really quick. So you wanna go to File, New, and uh, the sizing that we're actually gonna set for making brushes, you always wanna do it in 2,500 by 2,500 pixels across. And um, this is kind of like the resolution that we wanna save the brush so that when we create actual patterns and artwork in Photoshop, it's not gonna be a uh, low resolution or poor quality. So you can go ahead and create that. You can leave it at 72 resolution, which is perfectly fine. Okay, and then once you're here, you can open up the brushes palette and uh, the first thing that you're actually going to do is you're going to go to get more brushes and we're going to go to the adobe website i love kyle's brushes and so there's actually a free download here and i love the mega pack download so once you get here you can go ahead and download the one that you want to experiment with and it should just kind of download automatically onto your desktop. Once you've gotten that downloaded to your desktop, you wanna go back to Photoshop, and what you'll do is you'll, you're gonna to go to Import Brushes, and then you wanna locate the file somewhere in your desktop. So I've already installed my brushes, so once you install it, this is kind of how it's gonna look. It's gonna give you a ton of brushes, and then you can kind of go through some of these brushes and figure out like which ones you like. But for this one, we're actually gonna choose a watercolor soft. So I like this one, it's the um, Kyle Ultimate Watercolor Soft. And when you start painting, and by the way, I have a Wacom Intuos tablet uh, that I got off of Amazon. Um, I'll link it below this video as well in case you were interested, but it's easier to paint in Photoshop if you have a Wacom tablet of some sort, or if you have, um, the other suggestion that I would make is if you have uh, the iPad Pro, there's an app called AstroPad, and you can actually, um, use Photoshop on your iPad. So it acts like as a second screen. So you can just sync it and use the Apple Pencil. So that's something that I would recommend. And I'll link everything below in this video in case you were curious. So, but for this one, I have a Wacom Intuos um, and I have a reference image. So if you have a reference image of something you wanna create, for example, I have this one. So 
let me just zoom this in. So um, this is kind of like my inspiration image. You know, like we're not copying this exactly, but we're copying the likeness, if you understand what I mean. And so they've got a couple of different shapes here, and I thought this uh, watercolor soft brush would mimic that same, you know, kind of quality as uh, this design has. So there's a couple of different uh, shapes. If you want to take note, there's a smaller shape over here and then, you know, like something attached to it. And then there's a big blocky one here. So we're going to try to mimic the likeness. We're in no way copying this directly, but recreating something very similar. So there is a difference between copying somebody else's design. But I really love the way that, you know, some of these shapes are spread out. And so what you can do is you can create two to three different shapes to kind of get the same look and quality. So let's go ahead and recreate something like that. You can go ahead and create a new layer and then you can use the left or the right bra brackets on your keyboard to make the brush bigger or smaller. So in this case, let's just start painting. And then a good way to do this is to also drag this to the left side so you can have your screen kind of showing um, next to each other like this. And then we'll just go ahead and get rid of that right now. And then you can kind of adjust this. So what you're painting on your canvas is a little bit bigger than this. And then you can click on this and kind of move it around with the space bar. So we'll be on this canvas on the right. And then so I want to like draw this shape right here. Um, and then we're just going to go for it. We're just going to see how that looks. I would suggest blocking it out. And then, you know, getting a bigger shape and then you can go in and get as detailed as you want. You can also change the opacity here if you like so that in some areas you'll get something a little bit lighter. And so we want to start painting our shapes like in black or gray. And it doesn't really matter because um, in order to create a brush in Photoshop, you're going to have to convert this as a black, black and white shape. Well, I'll walk you through that as well. Let's just say, for example, I wanted to create something that looks like this. Okay. This is just like a quick demo for a longer class. I actually have this course on Skillshare on how to create brushes and I walk you through, you know, in greater detail on how to create this and how to even convert them into Procreate brushes. I'll link that below this video so that you can check it out on your own and hopefully learn a couple of new things. So here we are, we're just painting and then, you know, some areas you want it to be a little bit lighter so you can lower down the opacity of the brush and you can increase the size as well. Let's just say this is our first shape and then I wanted to increase the opacity so that this brush is a little bit darker in some areas just um keep painting it and again we're not copying this design exactly what we're doing is we're just trying to get like a similar look but you know the pattern that we're going to create is going to be something completely different let's just say okay i came up with this and and if you want this to kind of blend a little bit more, the other trick that I have is to go to filter and we're going to go to Gaussian, um, actually blur and Gaussian blur is what we're going to do. And you could just increase the radius to see how blurry you want this to be. So just a little bit, not too much. And then also to turn any brush into an eraser brush, we can go back up to mode and we can go to um, clear. And then from here, we're gonna lower down the opacity, opacity a little bit. And you know, some areas here have a lot of like white space. So we'll delete some areas to give it a different kind of look. And so that it's not so perfect i would say tie-dye is really messy so there's no right or wrong way to do this and then some areas we want to erase 
to have fabric show through if you are creating this to create a pattern for hoodies or even tie-dye t-shirts as well or pillows whatever you want to make this is kind of like my process for getting started and i'm sure if you're a photoshop user you'll take this technique and blend it with your own as well so there's some areas that i delete through and then some others a little bit more yeah just have fun with it so let's just say for example this is the brush that i wanted to create right i think this will make more sense if we made two different shapes this is one shape and then we'll create another one but once you've gotten the shape that you want you want to press v for the move tool and then we'll do command t what we're going to do is resize this to fit the entire square so we're doing this uh, so that the brushes that we make are going to be higher resolution once we've gotten the shape we want we'll test it out in just a little bit but you want to uncheck the background color and make sure the background is transparent and once you have that we'll go ahead and go to edit define brush preset so go ahead and press ok and then now we can test it. We'll put the background back on. We'll turn off our layer in case we want to make changes to that particular brush. Do a new layer and then we'll choose a color, different color, let's just say, let's go with something like purple. Now that we have this brush here, let's go ahead and click. Whoops, it's still on clear. So remember, put it back to normal mode so that it becomes a regular brush again. And then let's adjust the opacity to 100 and see what that looks like. So go ahead and tap. So it's a little bit light, but I think what happened is the flow is a little bit lower. So we'll try it again. So new layer, and then we'll just click. Make sure your flow is at 100%, otherwise you won't be able to see it. This is just one step. There's so many different ways that you can do this and you can experiment with Kyle's brushes that Adobe provides as like a free thing. I mean, there's like a ton of brushes out there. For example, if I wanted to make changes to this current one that we just made, we'll have to make sure you're on this and then you can choose another brush. What I like is that there's all these other extra brushes, um, which is super cool. So this one is actually more of like a, a darker brush, and I think it only works if you already have a shape. And this is more of like a smudge brush or a smudge tool, so it'll get a little bit darker. So like on the ends here, you can see it kind of like adding. So I think that's cool, but if you don't like it, you can always undo it by pressing Command Z or Control Z on your keyboard. Let's go back to the other brush that I like. So it's the Kyle's Soft Watercolor. All right, so now that we're back in the Kyle's Ultimate Watercolor Soft, that's actually one of my favorite brushes. So we wanna make another layer to create a second brush. So how about we make something kind of like splattery, um, a little bit more opaque than normal. Because you also, you also want to make stuff uh, that has variation in it, like shapes. And then so for this one, we'll go ahead and maybe do, I don't know, 75% opacity. And then let's make sure we're back on black so that we can see the shape. Let's just say we're going to do something that looks like kind of like this here. I know this is a process um, <laughs> and then let's say we want this area down here kind of kind of lighter so we'll go ahead and change the opacity and lower it down a little bit more and then you can make the brush a little bit smaller to get different kinds of shapes and details for the brush shape that you want to create. I know it's a process, it's kind of tedious, but if you want to have your own unique tie-dye look that nobody else has, then I would suggest going this route just so that you can create something a little bit more unique. 
and again, this is for me, like I used to make so many tie dye shirts by hand in high school, I would like dye them and get all the supplies and all the inks and all the dyes. And it was just such a mess. And then I figured out I wanted to be a graphic designer and started tinkering around in Photoshop for a couple of years now. I find that this is the coolest way, the funnest way to do it. And it just like looks a little bit more unique, I think, when you're painting the shapes yourself. Let's just say this is something I like and I wanna go ahead and turn it into a brush. The other technique that I would recommend doing is using this smudge tool. So you can go down here to the tools and grab the smudge. You can go back to Kyle's brushes and find something with this icon that makes it look like it's a smudge. Um, and this one's like a grainy blender. So let's try this one and see what we get. So it kind of just spreads it out a little bit more. I don't know if you could see that, but let's like zoom in. So, oh, okay. So this one's cool. It'll blend it in a little bit more just want to show you what it looks like so if we wanted to decrease the brush size so that we can get more finer blending here i know like for me this is how i create the brush sets that i sell on creative market it does take a couple of hours to do this. I love it because I can create whatever shape I want, you know, especially for the kind of looks and design and the style that I want to create. For me, this is fun and I hope it's fun for you too. Once we figure out that we like this shape, you can also press command T for this one and we can increase the size just so we can create this brush can do whatever you want with this. You can also delete some of the areas. I want to go back to clear and then we can go ahead and delete some areas here just so that when we create a shirt or something we'll have some color um, underneath kind of like peeking through. And that's why I like to erase a little bit and then you can bump up the opacity so you can literally erase some areas here just so that it doesn't look so stiff and boring just keep delaying areas that you think you'd want some color to show through all right so if you're satisfied with this let's go ahead and turn this into a brush uh, again and remember to uncheck the background color and then yeah make sure it's transparent and then we're gonna go to edit define brush preset just click OK you can rename it later if you like and then if you go to your brushes it should show up as the last two new brushes that you made let's go ahead and create a new layer turn on the background layer so we can kind of see the shape we'll go ahead and pick a color here so I picked purple last time. Let's maybe do, I don't know, turquoise or something, whatever color you wanna do. So for this one, make sure that you're on normal so that you can actually see the brush. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see, flow, oh yes, please. Increase the size of the flow. Okay, so that's kinda cool. Um, and if you don't like it, if you want it smaller, you can always. Uh, use the left bracket to make the brush a little bit smaller and then we'll go back and pick another color maybe a light orchid I don't know I'm totally just making this up as I go so let's say we chose that color and then we'll go back and pick the first brush that we made and then decrease the size and also when you're creating a pattern, you should also create the shapes on separate layers in case you want to tweak them a little bit. We'll go ahead and click that. And there you have it. So you just made your very own tie-dye Photoshop brushes. Let me know if you have any questions. Guys, I also wanted to announce that I just opened up a tie-dye shop on Etsy. The same products are also on my Shopify store. Have both of the links below uh, this video. I just started offering hoodies, sweaters, leggings, joggers, kids t-shirts. Um, I've also got some neck gaiters and face masks to protect yourself during this time. All right, well, hopefully you found this video useful. 
Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And if you like this video and want to see more of these kind of videos, hit the like button and consider subscribing to this channel. Also, if you have any suggestions on what kind of videos to make in the future, please let me know. Drop in a comment below. Hopefully I can keep creating content like this for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.